Welcome to Understanding the Symbols of Hieronymus Bosch, and this is part two of our little talk on heretic doors. And we're going to use our six keys for understanding the symbols of Hieronymus Bosch to unlock this door, and we'll go through it real quick. And to break it down, we'll be using our six keys for understanding the symbols of Hieronymus Bosch. This is a drollery, and drolleries are uh, little illustrations in the margins of illuminated manuscripts. And sometimes they're heretic, like this one. It's exactly what it looks like. It's the story of a loaf, a fish, and two identical hands separated by a veil. To understand the point it was making, we read the Bible. In the Bible, we read the account of Jesus feeding the 5,000. 5,000 people saw Jesus bless and break the bread. And so, later on, we read another account of Jesus with a loaf of fish and breaking bread. And in that account, we were told that uh, Two of his disciples were approached by the Jesus by Jesus after the resurrection, and they did not recognize him until he broke the bread. And it was not by his the sound of his voice, his face, and it was certainly not by those holes in his hands from the crucifixion. They recognized him from the breaking of the bread. And uh, this is a theological problem. And this is also where the heresy comes in. The problem comes in with that veil between the two hands or the two events. And that is because the veil represents the veil in the temple that was torn down the middle when Jesus was uh, crucified. And after which point, Jesus had holes in his hands and feet, which he went around and showed everyone systematically to prove who he was. So then the question comes up, why, if that was his solid physical evidence that no one could doubt, would he suddenly turn up and not have holes in his hands, and only be recognizable by his mannerisms, by his breaking of the bread. So now we have the basic dilemma. Both stories cannot be true. And now it's time to tie it all in with the symbols of Hieronymus Bosch. We can tell from his symbols that he used two further scriptures to guide his understanding of events. The first one is from the book of Acts describing Jesus' ascension into heaven, where we read, They were looking intently into the sky as he was going, when suddenly two men dressed in white stood beside them. Men of Galilee, they said, Why do you stand here looking into the sky? This same Jesus, who has been taken from you into heaven, will come back in the same way you have seen him go into heaven. And what we're looking at here are the seven deadly sins and four last things by Hieronymus Bosch. And notice that the resurrected Jesus, painted in the very center, is a wound-bearing Jesus. Uh, very clearly he's been resurrected from the dead, but he has his wounds intact to show his friends. And it's, he's going to keep the same body, ascend to heaven, and finally what the scripture says is, Behold, he is coming with the clouds, and every eye will see him, even those who pierced him. All the tribes of the earth will mourn because of him. So shall it be. Amen. Revelation 1.7 But notice it said, Even those who pierced him. 
so they wouldn't be able to recognize that he was the one they pierced unless those piercings were still intact, unless he returned exactly as he left um, with his proof, the proof of his great suffering and triumph. And that's what Bosch is pictured on two separate judgment days and twice in the seven deadly sins, as well as Jesus looking over the scene in the hay wain. In all cases, Jesus is seen on the clouds, or in the heavens anyway, showing his wounds. Bosch is clearly on the side of the wounds from the resurrection, lasting all the way through the wounds shown on the second coming. And this brings us back to our heretic door. Why are there two identical hands here? Where did the idea come from? And this is where we need to think like Ebionites. An Ebionite knows that the source of all discord in the scriptures comes from Paul, Saul of Tarsus. And that's exactly where this comes from, by way of Luke, who was not a follower of Jesus, but a convert of Paul. And his gospel does its best to prop up the teachings of Paul. And one thing you should always keep in mind concerning the Bible is when Paul wrote his letters, the Gospels had yet to be written. Paul didn't read the Gospels and then build on them. Uh, Paul just spoke, well, he was making stuff up. He never saw Jesus on the road. And so in his writings, when he was describing uh, the resurrection of Jesus and extrapolating on the resurrection of everyone else, uh, he actually came to a very logical conclusion. He didn't know about the story of doubting Thomas and the nail holes and Jesus running around showing everyone his wounds. He naturally assumed that God would raise up someone not in their beat up bodies, but in perfect new bodies. And that's how he imagined things would be in heaven. Paul tells us, so it will be with the resurrection of the dead. What is sown is perishable. It is raised imperishable. It is sown in dishonor. It is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness. It is raised in power. It is sown in the natural body. It is raised in the spiritual body. He writes to the Philippians, but our citizenship is in heaven and from it we await a Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who will transform our lowly body to be like his glorious body by the power that enables him even to subject all things to himself. Paul also says, So I tell you this, brothers, flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does the perishable inherit the imperishable. At the last tr trumpet, the dead will be raised imperishable, for this perishable pod body must put on the imperishable, and this mortal body must put on immortality. It was inconceivable to Paul that Jesus would be raised with flaws in his body, and that these flaws would be taken to heaven, and that when he returned, the flaws would still be there as identifying marks. Uh, it never occurred to Paul that that was supposedly how the story was going, but that's the story told in the Gospels. And of course, an Ebionite would side with the Gospels against Paul. But the account is written by Luke. Luke, being someone who never met Jesus, was a disciple of Paul. And so, apparently, when he ran across the story of the two men seeing Jesus but not recognizing him, Luke included it in his account 
in order to bolster the ideas of Paul, but they contradict the gospel accounts. The point of the symbol is, who are you going to believe, Paul or Jesus? So, how all this was meant to work is, if I were the heretic who was the proud owner of this illuminated manuscript, and I thought you were a likely candidate, that you were a reasonable person with a good heart, I would very cautiously begin to explain this symbol to you, or I would raise questions. I wouldn't assert what it was because you might not be favorable to uh, embracing heresy, and I might be getting myself in trouble. Uh, but I'm going to raise questions bit by bit and have you, as you look at this symbol, and if you are receptive, you know, I will go through it just as I more or less have gone through it in these videos. I would recruit you that way, appealing to your reason and your respect for Jesus and the story of Jesus. And that's how these heretic doors are meant to work. You are unlikely to guess it on your own, and it contains a dangerous idea that must be very carefully presented. Remember, the church ran torture chambers as well as inquisitions and ordered their holy wars, not only on the infidels in the Middle East, but also on the Cathars, the Hussites, and later on, after Hieronymus Bosch, the Anabaptists, and lots of others. They were monsters. But monsters are magical things, and we know there is no such thing as magic. And that tells us that the monsters are symbols. They are standing in for something else. And in fact, they are standing in for the Christian church. But you came here to increase your understanding of the symbols of Hieronymus Bosch. And so you shall. So first we'll look at the Last Judgment using our keys. Well, it's exactly what it looks like. What does it look like? Well, we see a bunch of humans, but they're being abused. They're naked, they're vulnerable, and they're all being victimized by monsters. Jesus has returned when there are monsters roaming about in the earth. This isn't the afterlife. This is the present earth that Jesus arrives at. There are monsters in the earth. Jesus has come to relieve the suffering of the humans and vanquish the monsters from the earth. And we see the same motif in the Garden of Earthly Delights. In the right panel of the Garden of Earthly Delights, we see depicted a great number of demons tormenting and torturing a bunch of human beings, exactly as we saw on Judgment Day. And it means the exact same thing. This is a depiction of the world of Hieronymus Bosch, the world of medieval Europe as seen through the eyes of a heretic. They are monsters torturing the innocent. I'm going to leave you with a heretic door that you might be able to make out for yourself. Why is the one man soiling himself at the sight of the little man with the frog legs? It's pretty easy. Just think like an Ebionite. Thanks for watching Understanding the Symbols of Hieronymus Bosch. Oh, and here's a hint.